Hey guys, Holly with Kateri Designs here, and I'm just doing a quick little tutorial on how I make some of my jewelry. Um, I'm right today. I'm going to show you how I can take this um, broken piece, and it's broken. You can see that back that is just a hole. There's nothing to put in. I could glue uh, a back on it and make it a pin or something if I wanted to, but I want to do something really kind of funky and different outside of my comfort zone and so I'm going to recycle this broken piece uh, into a ring. Um, to me it would be kind of uh, gaudy chic. <laughs> People are wearing big rings again and so I've got a couple of um, things like this that I'm actually going to turn into rings. And so what you'll need today is whatever you want to use. Um, uh, recycle piece that you want to use. Um, there's no glue involved in this. It's just a little bit of creativity in utilizing the petals on this ring and some uh, 20, let's see, this is about 24 gauge uh, to 26 gauge wire. Um, this is a pair of wire. Uh, you can use uh, whatever uh, type of wire that you like to use, but this is pair of wire. And uh, a mandrel and um, a flat tip pair of uh, pliers and then a fine tip if needed okay so this one's going to be really simple um, kind of <laughs> uh, I'm gonna put my glasses on um, but this uh, we're just going to take a part of this wire and this bottom pe pedal we're gonna hide it in here and if you can see in here in these petals there's like they have slits in here so I'm going to come down through a slit and then go up to the slit uh, when I want to tie this off. And then we're going to make several um, uh, rotations because we this ring this is actually very heavy, and this is not. So we need to make several passes with this to to make it a sturdy ring. And um, this is just your you know your costume jewelry kind of thing. Um, I'll probably let my granddaughter play with it or <laughs> whatever. But so first thing I have to do is get where I can have this connected. And I want to leave a little bit of a tail hanging out so I can work with this. Because we're going to want to put that towards the end. Uh, we're going to want that to, um, to help wrap the ring. So I'm going to take this and wrap it around this base of this ring. And take these two together. And like a shoelace, I'm just going to pull real tight to try to get it as close to that base as possible. And don't worry if it bends it a little bit. This water, wire is really soft. You just kind of straighten it out with your fingers. And then I'm going to choose a petal that I'm going to go in between. Sorry if I go out of camera here because I'm not real good with filming. And I just push that down into that slit. See how it goes into there? And then I'm going to use that as my starting point. And I'm going to use a, a size um, 7 to 7.5. I'm not going to be too strict on that because I want anyone... Uh, to be able to put this on one of their fingers and so uh, the average size ring finger uh, in America is a seven to seven and a half and so I'm just going to use that size and so just getting started it's a little bit awkward so I'm going to take that down and I'm going to wrap it and you got to try to get as close to sorry I'm trying to look at this and do this at the same time you try to get it as close to the other one as possible um, so you're going to have to do some holding. It takes a little bit of finagling and I'm shocked that I can still do this because my dexterity has gone through the window. Um, so I'm just going to keep wrapping and don't worry this this will come together at the end and I have several rings of wire wrap rings that I've done that um, people have really enjoyed uh, that I have several you know several loops on them. Not every ring has to be one single solid loop, especially when you're making um, custom jewelry, unless you're a, uh, a an actual jeweler or a uh, metalsmith, which I'm not. So I'm just trying to keep them close together and I'm not overlapping. They will overlap in the end, they, um, they can, and you can just kind of move them around a little bit, but it's not too much. So you can see how this is going. I'm going to do a couple more loops to make sure it's nice and sturdy. And then push them in and make sure I've got them all nice and together. Again, apologize. See, if you let go of the tension, it just 
it's good. It's like a slinky. Because <laughs> so you're just pushing back in and hold it with your finger and pull up. Now, um, I'm going to end up coming back up in the same place that I went out in. Or, or not went out in, that I opposite of what I went out in. And so this is where this tail actually helps to keep you as a guide. But it's also what we're going to use to help tie off this end. So, um, and I also forgot you're going to need a pair of wire cutters. I actually have some here. These are um, really for um, uh, a different type of metal, but it's okay. Anyway, so I'm going to come up here. I'm going to move my tail out of the way. I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to get to that, to that inside, and I'm going to come around. I'm going to find where I came out, and I'm going to go back down right here, and I'm going to end up cutting off this metal, um, giving myself maybe, I don't know, six inches to uh, help wrap around to close off um, so this doesn't spring open on us and uh, look tacky. So um, you're going to have to slide it off, but hold on to it while you're sliding it off the mandrel. It's a little bit. See, I'm holding it right here. And this is where it gets a little bit finagling. Let me see, you're going to pull one side down through and you're going to tuck it in real carefully so you don't bend because this metal is soft and you don't want to bend your ring. But if you do, it's okay, I'll show you what to do. Um, and you're going to come tuck it up in here. This is already starting to try to pull on me. It's going to tuck it up in here. Get my camera to focus. Tuck it up in here and we're going to wrap it around and make... Uh, a nice um, kind of a decorative uh, uh, closure so but we're closing it with the metal itself so hopefully I don't go out too much out of camera here but I have to see what I'm doing so that I don't mess it up and the ring itself is already trying to loop over itself so I'm just gonna try to straighten out these ends here and it's gonna loop a little bit because some of these when I uh, looped in when I came back up to the ring it, it crossed over so that does happen and it's okay it doesn't take away from the ring it's still very pretty this one out of the way and then tuck this in and when you cut off your end you're gonna want to cut it off uh, this end you're gonna want to cut it off where it's up towards the inside of the ring so you can tuck it up underneath here so it doesn't cut anybody's fingers so Some people use glue at the very tip of it. I don't, I don't like glue. The glue turns the metal, and I don't like using that. I actually need a snub nose or a flat tip. I use a flat tip and uh, flush cut. They call them flush cutters. Or um, I grew up with my father. We called it's a wire cutter, nippers, or whatever. We didn't have fancy names for them. So all right. So and then I'm gonna take my flat tip here. And I'm just going to squish that into that ring there. And it's nice and flat into there. And then push them together. Where the loops I made, push them together again real tight. And then make sure that's nice and snug. And then you got to take your finger and rub on it to make sure it's not snagging or cutting. So you don't want to cut anybody. And then I'm going to repeat this next side to do that. You can see a little bit where this is already a little bit coming out and I'm going to show you how to fix that. Um, working with wire, especially softer wire, can actually, um, I think I'm going to come this way because it'll give me a little bit of a, a decorative, a, de <laughs> a decoration type of a loop there. Um, but when you work with softer wire, it, it can tend to bend and so you have to, you have to learn little tricks on how to get it to um, look look nice so just can see me coming through here and wrapping through here okay and I'm gonna put this back on my mandrel for a minute so I can one straighten out those um, bumps and you can do that uh, let's see if you have a pair of um, uh, silicone coated silicone coated um, pliers uh, you can just rub up and down it and it'll help smooth out some of those 
uh, hand marks that you've got in there. But also when I do that, I'm going to hold this because I want to get this one really tight. So my first loop, I'm going to just pull on it like that. And that way I don't disturb the shape of the ring. And this ring is already, because I started off at the seven and a half and an eight. And as you're wrapping, it's going to tighten it up. And it's already tightened it up to a just under a seven. And so I'm going to have to rotate this thing back and forth to get it to go back to the seven all the way. So you always start off a little bit bigger with wire wrapping because it can tend, when you wrap and close off stuff, it can tend to close on you. Okay, oh, I don't want to knock that tip off, so we're pretty much going to be stuck there. You can see how it went back around again. See how nice and pretty and round that is? So I'm just going to finish off this um, closure so the ring doesn't spring open. The, this part of the ring doesn't, sorry, I'm out of focus again. This ring doesn't spring open and I'm gonna pull on that and I'm pulling a little bit I can feel it pulling I've got about four loops so on the other side whatever do you do to one side you want to try to do to the other as far as make it uniform and pretty okay my ring is bending a little bit you can see how it's bending again mandrel and you can fix the wire it's it's wire is forgiving to a certain degree um, but even anything thinner than a 24, like if you get a 26 gauge, um, doing this wire wrapping like this, it will, it, it can break really easily. And I'm out of camera. I'm sorry. I'm not used to filming and it's hard for me to see. So one more time and I'm going to snip this off here. And give it where it goes on to there. And then I'm just going to. And it doesn't want to bend. I'm going to snip it a little bit more. And the goal is to try to make both sides look the same. And as I said, it's a little bit of finagling. And then run your finger. I have a little bit of snag on that, so I'm gonna make sure I tuck that in. And here's where sometimes you have to fix it. Sorry, I'm not even in the. You can see. You see how that little lip is not wanting to cooperate? And if it just keeps not cooperating, I'll just take another wrap down and I'll snip it off at a different pit place. Once it gets to a certain degree, it, it just doesn't want to, it doesn't want to work. Wire is forgiving, but only to a certain degree. Once you've bent it over and over and over again, it's, there we go. Hopefully this will take this. And it's just, okay, well, good thing is, is that you can watch me fix it. All right, so I'm just going to take it down. Just, I just unwrapped it once. See where it's sticking up. What happened is I, I cut it off at the wrong spot last time. And then I just go ahead and crimp that down there we go scoot these in all right and then you rub your finger on it and the other thing and it's a little trick that my dad taught me is you take a nail file and you have little burrs and it just sands it right down around it perfectly Save your little metal scraps. You never know when you're going to need them. They come in handy. And also, metal is expensive. So, all right. Well, this come, came out kind of pretty. I'm going to fix it back on the mandrel, like I said I was going to, because it's a little bit bent. Put it back on the mandrel. And all that twisting and stuff has gotten us down to right about a six and a half. So, we started off at a seven and a half, and it moved it down. So, 
again, when you're working with some of this metal, sometimes um, it's best to uh, start off a bigger size than you want. Um, I do wear a six and a half and, uh, on some of my fingers, depending upon the, the day. Again, smoothing out, just take my pliers and smooth out anything. That's why I like the metal too. It's, it's very easy to work with on the mandrel. And this was a broken piece of jewelry and I turned it into a very flashy, <laughs> uh, I would call it gaudy chic, um, cocktail ring, whatever. It's a, definitely a conversational piece um, when you want to go out and you're whatever. Um, or it could be costume jewelry for your grandchildren or whatever and they can pretend, you know, whatever. It's But it's taking something that would have been thrown away and recycling it into something useful. So um, I can't, I don't know if you guys can tell how actually very shiny this is. Um, it's very blingy. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the uh, video and excuse, uh, excuse the filming. I'm just starting and I'm trying to learn. So I hope that you enjoyed the video and y'all have a blessed day. Thank you.